Hello stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Today, I am part of the Stampers Dozen blog hop and we are featuring second release celebration products in our blog hop. So this is super exciting. We had a second release starting February 16th that runs through March 31st, that's the end of celebration, in this little brochure. And what we got was um, an eclectic expression stamp set free with a $50 order, or you can get the springtime foil specialty paper free with a $50 order, or the blossoming basket bundle. And this comes with not only the stamp set, but this basket weave embossing folder that is absolutely gorgeous. So I thought I would concentrate on the blossoming basket bundle and I'm going to show you a layering technique for a beautiful 3D effect. So let's get started and I'll show you what I came up with. I'm gonna bring my grid paper in here to protect my tabletop. This is the um, embossing folder, Basket Weave. It is one of our really thick dynamic embossing folders, absolutely gorgeous. And then of course, this is the Blossoming Basket stamp set. You get five different stamps in here. This is a bundle. You get these together when you place a fifty dollar. I'm sorry, when you place a hundred dollar order, you can get both of these for free. So what I decided to do last week on my Facebook Live, I'm live every Sunday night on my Facebook page at six p.m. Central Time. I did a whole bunch of cards using techniques with ink and embossing folders. So for my video today and my project, I decided to give this basket weave embossing folder a try with the ink because I didn't use that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the folder and you're going to want to use the back of the one that has the Stampin' Up! label. So I am going to place ink on my embossing folder right here and I am using crumb cake ink and I'm just going to tap it. I'm going to show you what happened when I pushed too hard with the first layer that I embossed in here. So you don't want to push real hard because you don't want that ink going into those recessed areas. And I think you can see right here where all you're getting is the little squares in between the weaves in the basket weave. You want to do just a little bit harder so that you get a little bit more ink on here, but not too hard that you get it to sink down into all the little grooves. Then I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and this is three and a half by four and three quarters. And I'm going to bring my big shot in here. Don't forget, when you're using these thick dynamic folders, you only use one cutting plate with your platform. I'm going to set my cardstock right in here, and you don't want to let this move once you get it in there. So I'm going to close this up bring in one cutting plate, so we're not making a sandwich here, just one cutting plate, and run that through the machine. Are you ready to see the magic? Here we go. Look at that. Isn't that a neat effect? So all I did was put ink in between or on the raised edges of this embossing folder. Now I promised I would show you what happens when you get too much ink on the folder. This is what happened, okay? So we've got a lot of ink run over here. Um, and then the neat thing, I thought, well, why don't I ink up this side, which is opposite the side with the label on it. And this is the effect that I got, which I thought was totally unique. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but I'm, I'm working on thinking of something. So don't ink too much. This is the perfect amount of pressure. Now what do we do with these embossing folders? I take them to my sink. I just run them underwater. I don't have to touch them or wipe them or anything. Just run them underwater. I dry them off on a towel or leave them sit to dry by themselves. This ink completely washes off. Now, these are water-based inks, okay? You don't want to use Stazon or any archival ink pads because that will stain your embossing folder. All right, so let me keep moving along here. I brought in the basket stamp and I stamped it three different times here. 
And this is going to be one of the baskets that I, this is going to be complete, the basket. I brought in my stamp and blend markers and on this one I'm using pumpkin pie dark and I'm just going to outline one of these flowers hang on I got to get my readers on aren't these beauties so I can see a little better and I found this was the best flower image in here to use as a single flower on my card and I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about here. So I did my outlining with the dark one and now I'm going to come in with the light pumpkin pie and I'm just going to blend all of this together leaving that center without any color in it. And I'm going to use the light daffodil delight for the center of my flowers on this project. And then my paper snips to cut it out. Now you might think, oh, cutting out these little flowers, it really wasn't that bad. I do not hate fussy cutting, but I'm not a huge fan. Like some people really love to just stamp images and sit in front of the TV and fussy cut them. I know several people that love that. It's very relaxing for them. Um, I'm kind of indifferent. I'm good either way. I know that I love punches more than I love die cuts because I just think they're so much easier. But as far as fussy cutting goes, don't have a problem with it. And I'm just cutting around the little jagged edges on this flower because it's going to make it look neater. And there's my little orange flower. Look at my fingers. They're orange too. Okay. Then I took my crumb cake dark marker and let's see if I need to zoom in on this we'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see better I came in here and colored around the top of my basket with the darker crumb cake and then I also did some shading right down the side here Maybe a little along the bottom. That was with my big tip. With my smaller tip, I'm going to come in and use that on the handle. Oh, I just realized I forgot to put my tag on there. I need to do that, too. So I get that all colored in. Then I came in with my light old olive. And I'm just going to color in these few little leaves that are here. <laughs> then I'm going to bring in the orange. Oh, I need to come in with the light um, crumb cake and finish my basket. I forgot about that. And you're just going to color right over what you've done and that is going to blend that darker area so you can see how now it just looks very nicely um, shaded on that side of the basket then I'm going to come in with the orange again and I'm going to just color around the outside of my flowers and I'll show you why here in just a minute This is one of the easier ways to color something like this. Okay. I see that I missed a little spot right here. Hang on. There we go. Okay, once I have this done, I'm going to cut this basket out. And again, I, I'm not cutting around all these intricate little things. You're just going to leave a small white border around the outside. This is the easy way to cut out intricate stuff, right? And again, this cuts out relatively easy also because you don't need to go into all those little crooks and crannies. I see I missed a spot there. I'll come back in and do that in a second. And again, around all these little berries, 
Leave a little bit of white space around your handle. I'm just going to cut this off to get it out of my way. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Then, um, I also colored all of these flowers on this one. And through the magic of TV, I have cut them out. <laughs> And then I'm gonna need one more little flower here. And this is how you really get that great stacking on your project. Whoops. Let's go with our crumb cake. This is part of our basket here that didn't get colored. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna again come around here. And you don't have to be real neat because you're gonna cut this out. And I'm just gonna add some of this darker pumpkin pie so I have some shading on my flower. Come in with the lighter pumpkin pie and color over top. I'm gonna leave that center empty because we're gonna color that with the Daffodil Delight light marker. There we go. A Little bit of yellow in the middle here and then you're gonna cut just this flower out. And I'm actually only cutting the center of it, not the whole flower. So I'm just gonna cut right kinda of through the middle here. And again, you can see that this cuts really easily. It's not real hard. Meaning that it looks really intricate and it looks like it would be super, super time consuming. But it's not. And this is how you get those beautiful 3D stacked effects. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to bring in some dimensionals and I've got some pieces left on the edges here. And I'm gonna add those to the back of my whole set of flowers. And I'm gonna come in and put that right over top of the flowers that are here. That's why I wanted to color just the edges of them so if you saw it from an angle, it wouldn't look blank under there. And then I'm going to take some mini dimensionals and put those on this little flower. And we're going to pop that right over top of this one. Isn't that spectacular? And then this little flower is going to get glued on to our basket. I'm just going to add a little dot of glue right there. And this one is like it fell out of the basket. What do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? Love that stacked effect. That's how you do it. It's super easy. Now I'll bring in the whole card here. I used um, white embossing powder on a half inch strip by three of pumpkin pie cardstock. This is the background that we made. And I just took my basket and put it on dimensionals right on the front. Then what did I do with the inside? Added another flower right here. And I did stamp this, color it, and cut it out. So isn't that just beautiful? Besides the folder being a beautiful folder, here's a neat technique you can do with it too. And then I've got another one here. This one is done with Daffodil Delight and the Daffodil Stamp and Blend Marker. So I used orange pumpkin pie in the middle and Daffodil Delight on the sides. And one thing I forgot to do on this basket was put that little tag in there that comes with the stamp set in the bundle also. So we've got our basket weave and our blossoming basket bundle for a couple really great cards here. I think you guys would have a lot of fun with this particular bundle. There's a lot of neat cards available too. Um, Stampin' Up! demonstrators have been making tons and tons of projects with these. I hope you will go to my blog because you need to continue on on the Stampers Dozen blog hop 
all the projects are going to be featuring the second release celebration item. So I'm sure we're going to have some really cute projects with the eclectic expressions and the springtime foils. If you missed my Facebook Live from two Sundays ago, you can go to my Facebook page, A Stamp Above your creative coach. Just do a search on Facebook for that and you will see all the amazing colors. I did a fabulous technique with the Stampin' Blend markers and these foil papers in a resist technique that's super, super cool. If you'd like to order any products, you can click right up here in the top right corner. That'll take you right to my blog where you'll, you'll find an online button in the right hand column. Please make sure you use the hostess code that's featured there also in that right column. If your order is under $150, you get entered in a drawing to win a free stamp set. If it's over $150, you'll still get entered in the drawing, but you'll get your own stamp and rewards. And with a $150 order, you could have this bundle and you could get one of the other items as well. So it's a good time to stock up on your cardstock if you're running low or just to stock up for supplies for the year because celebration is the best time of the year. I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks so much for checking out my video. Bye-bye.